Hi, my name is Hannah Rush and I'm Miss Fair Park. In addition to being Miss Fair Park, I also am part of Pi Phi, which is why I'm reading to you today from Read Across America Week. So as you can see, I'm wearing my little sash, and also my Pi Phi Loves uh, Read and Lead to Chi, which is the name of my social impact initiative, as well as Pi Phi's philanthropy. So for Read Across America Week, one of the biggest things we read is stuff written by Dr. Seuss. And this one is actually not written by Dr. Seuss, but very similar themes and illustrations. It's called A Whale of a Tale, all about porpoises, dolphins, and whales. It's by Bonnie Worth, illustrated by Aristides Ruiz and Joe Matthew. I probably said that wrong. What's the story today? Funny that you should ask. We're going to take on a whale of a task to learn about whales and their smaller relations, porpoises and dolphins, the group called cetaceans. So please hang on tight as we lower down toward the boat that we soon will be sailing aboard. One very large boat, the best in the nation, Captain McElligot's cetacean station. Like monkeys and donkeys and dogs, cats and camels, Whales, porpoises, and dolphins are all kinds of mammals. Cetaceans might look like the fish in the sea, but cetaceans are closer to you and to me. They're warm-blooded like us, but with fins and no legs. They give birth to live babies and do not lay eggs. Fish breathe through gills, like that caught over it there. But cetaceans blow holes like noses breathe air. Land mammals have bodies all covered with hairs. Cetaceans have just a few spare hairs on theirs. Our hairs keep us warm, but their fat does the trick. Sometimes, like a mattress, it's two whole feet thick. Another big difference between whales and fish, thing one and thing two can explain if you wish. Fish lift their tails side to side when they go, but whales flip theirs upward and downward like so. Some cetaceans catch food with the fish with the teeth in their head. Others use something called baleen instead. Baleen grows in rows and forms sort of a grill for straining the tiny sea critters called krill. But tooth for baleen, cetaceans don't chew. They swallow food whole. That's all that they do. Some whales even swallow some things by mistake. A bucket, a boot, or a big rubber snake. Most cetaceans we know like to swim in a troop. A pod is the name that we give to this group. If danger is near, they will sound an alert to keep their young safe and help those who are hurt. Because it is smallish, the porpoise is shy. It swims near the shore and does not leap up high. Only doll's purpose swims out into in the sea. 30 miles an hour, the porpoise speed E. We can all play a game, so let's make a start. Porpoise or dolphin, who can tell them apart? Porpoise teeth are flat, dolphins are cones. Porpoise noses are shorter with delicate bones. Porpoise or dolphin is easy to spot. Dolphins' noses are long, but porpoises are not. Of dolphins, there are about 35 types. Some dolphins have patches and others have stripes. These markings are really a very good way of hiding the dolphins as they hunt their prey. The smallest is five feet from its nose to its tail. The largest, largest is orca or the killer whale. Bottlenose leaps forward as neat as you please. The dusky leaps backward and does it with ease. The one we call spinner, McElegant Nose, swims round in the air like a top this guy goes. And sometimes the spinner will come to a stop and peer out of the water. It's called a spy hop. This humpback is one very odd-looking mammal. Its back has a hump like the land-living camel. The Stalbans of Batu, and what do you think if I told you that Batu has skin that is pink? The dolphin has a way of looking around by forming a picture that's made out of sound. It sends out a sound at a high steady rate, the sound bouncing back, making its jawbone vibrate. Echolocation is the word that we call the underwater way that dolphins see all. Most dolphins could win mommy of the year. They care for their young and keep them quite near. 
When dolphins are born and nurse dolphin is there to bring baby up to breathe in its first air. And when mom gives to hunt, why this thoughtful critter leaves baby behind with the babysitter. I bet you are thinking, hey, what about whales? The biggest come last. Oh, that trick never fails. Whales as a rule like to stay on the move as all of our studies can easily prove. In tropical seas, in the winter they breed. In the summer they swim toward the poles to feed. Some scientists tack whales with sensors or plates to study their habits, their lives, and their traits. The sperm whale can dive down one mile or more. Its rich blood and muscles are up to the chore. A cave in its head that's the size of a jeep weighs down the whale's body and helps it sink deep. Some whales we have found have teeth much like beaks. They live far from the land, but we've had a few peaks. The norwhale's long tooth is a tusk, as you see. It might work as a sword or an ice pick, maybe. One day you might hear a big and loud splash. A whale has leapt up and came down with a crash. We call this act breaching and no one person, not one, knows why, knows why the whales do this. Perhaps just for fun. The best breachers of all are those whales they say, humpback and sperm, right whale and gray. The ocean is loud with the sounds of whales talking. They're clicking and groaning and moaning and squawking. Why is it whales talk to communicate? Who, what, why, and where, and if they'll be late? The humpback sweet song, who won... When McElligot's heart, it even showed up on the pop music chart. Dick and Sally, all set? Oh, this will be a blast. Here comes the blue whale, the biggest comes last. The blue whale is big, and for what it is worth, it's the biggest thing, living in sea or on earth. The blue whale is big, yes indeed, and what's more, bigger is still than the big, big, biggest dinosaur. The story of the porpoise, the dolphin, and the whale, you have to admit... is a whale of a tail. And that is all. Thank you.